Hey, grace and peace, everybody. Today, I'm coming with Daniel chapter two. Again, we're reading um, from the book of Daniel. And just um, the reason why I decided to read Daniel is because um, it's like God is showing me about his sovereignty um, over this world, over this land. And so I just, I've been taking the time to go through and just kind of read through some things. So feel free in your spare time to read. And I just pray that God give you, um, and that he enlighten your eyes and give you that clarity and, um, and all getting, get understanding um, as you read and as we all read and, and study to show ourselves approved unto God, you know. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead on and read um, Daniel chapter 2. Okay. One night during the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had such disturbing dreams that he couldn't sleep. He called in his magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers, and he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed. As they stood before the king, he said, I have had a dream that deeply troubles me, and I must know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic, Long live the king. Tell us the dream, and we will tell you what it means. But the king said to the astrologers, I am serious about this. If you don't tell me what my dream was and what it means, you will be torn limb from limb and your houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. But if you tell me what I had dreamed and what the dream means, I will give you many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me the dream and what it means. They said again, please, your majesty, tell us that the dream and we will tell you what it means. Verse 8, the king replied, I know what you're doing. You're stalling for the time because you know I am serious when I say, if you don't tell me the dream, you are doomed. So he had, consp so you have conspired to tell me lies, hoping I will change my mind, but tell me the dream and then I'll know you can tell me what it means. I'm going to stop right there for a second. So we see that King Nebuchadnezzar knew that this was deeper than just your average dream, your your pizza dream. I don't even know if they had pizza back then, but this was this was more than just a, a nightmare. This was something that was for him personally, and it was spiritual. It was a spiritual significance. So that's why he didn't call anybody of his cabinet or different ones. He called those who were magicians, astrologers, those who they considered wise men at that time because they, he knew that he needed a spiritual and um, interpretation of his dream. So I'll go ahead on uh, to verse 10 now. The astrologers replied to the king, no one on earth can tell the king his dream and no king, however great and powerful, has ever asked such a thing of any magician, enchanter, or astrologer. The king's demand is impossible. No one except the gods can tell you your dream and they do not live here among the people. So see, they were all paganistic, worshiping the little G gods of this world, um, worshiping Satan pretty much and his demons. And so they had no true clarity of what the God of heaven, the true and living God um, knew because of they, they surrounded themselves with darkness and finding it through dark works and all of that kind of stuff. So verse 11 says, the king... The king's demand is impossible. No one except the gods can tell you this dream and they do not live here among the people. But see, we serve a God who lives among us. Let me throw that in there, okay? He lives with us every single day, day and night. He don't sleep. He he, he don't slumber, y'all. He is with us. He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. So he's always with us, okay? Verse 12. The king was furious when he heard this and he ordered that all the wise men of Babylon be executed. And I believe the reason why he did that is because he knew that his life depended on knowing what this dream meant. His life was in jeopardy. And he knew it. So he needed that interpretation. Okay. Verse 13. And because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. When Arioch, the commander of King's Guard, of the King's Guard, came to them, Daniel handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. 
You hear how he handled it? With wisdom and discretion. He asked Arioch, why has the king issued such a harsh decree? So Arioch told him all that had happened. Daniel went at once to see the king and requested more time to tell the king what the dream meant. Then Daniel went home and told his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, what had happened. He urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling them the secret so that they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. That night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. We're going to stop right there for a second. So at this point, Daniel knows that it is spiritual significance of this dream. So he said, friends, let's go to the God of heaven. Let's go to the true and living God, the one who made and created us, the one who knows us. He reveals secrets. And so that night, God gave Daniel the vision that Nebuchadnezzar had had. Okay. And so because of this, instantly, I love Daniel's humility. He began to worship God. This is what he says in verse 20. He said, Praise the name of God forever and ever, for he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. Do y'all hear that? He controls the course of world events. God controls the course of world events. He removes kings and set up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. Verse, 40, um, verse 22, he reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength. You have told me what we ask of you and reveal to us what the king demanded. And so Daniel is giving praise to God because he revealed and he said, God knows what's hidden in darkness. He knows the heart of a man, the dark heart of a man. And so because God knows, he knows that, but yet he is light and light surrounds him. And so Daniel is giving God praise for giving them the answer. Let's go to verse number 24 as Daniel interprets the dream to King Nebuchadnezzar. Then Daniel went into went to his end to see Ariok, whom the king had ordered to execute the wise men of Babylon. Daniel said to them, don't kill the wise men. Take me to the king and I will tell him the meaning of his dream. Ariok quickly took Daniel to the king and said, I have found one of the captives from Judah who will tell the king the meaning of his dream. Now let's remember y'all that Previous to this in chapter one, remember, they took themselves off of the king's food and they asked that they can eat food that they were able to eat because, see, they still um, respected and honored the way they were trained to eat from kids and Judah. So they wanted to keep that. And so eating the king's foods, which might have consisted of meats that they did not eat and different foods that they did not take part in. And so that's why they did the vegetables. And I believe in doing so and having that good diet and also and just really seeking God like they did, God quickly revealed the answer to them. So it was significance in them eating properly the way they did eating how they were raised in their kingdom, okay? All right, and so let's go again to verse um, 26. The king said to Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar, is this true? Can you tell me what the dream was and what it means? And verse 27, Daniel replied, there are no wise men, enchanters, or fortune tellers who can reveal the king's secret, but... There is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now, I will tell you your dream and the visions you saw as you lay on your bed. While your majesty was sleeping, you dreamed about coming events. He who reveals secrets has shown you what is going to happen. And it is not because I am wiser than anyone else that I know the secret of your dream, but because God wants you to know 
and wants you to understand what is in your heart. And so I love the way Daniel put this. God wanted him to understand what was in his heart. And so God will give visions to anybody who he, he chooses to because he is God. And so verse 31 says, in your vision, your majesty, you saw standing before you a huge statue of a, uh, a huge shining statue of a man. It was it was a frightening sight. The head of the statue was made of fine gold. Its chest and arms were silver. Its belly and thighs were bronze. Its legs were iron. And its feet were a combination of iron and big clay. And as you watched, a rock was cut from a mountain, but not by human hands. It struck the feet of iron and clay, smashing them to pieces. The whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold. Then the wind blew them without a trace, like chaff on the threshing floor. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. We uh, Y'all, we, we know who that rock is. His name is Jesus. Okay, we're going to keep reading. Verse 36. Th that was a dream. Now we will tell the king what it means. Your majesty, you are the greatest of kings. The God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and honor. He has made you the ruler over all the inhabited world. I did not realize that, y'all, that King Nebuchadnezzar was the ruler of all the inhabited world. Did you know that? Anyway, let's continue. Um and has put the wild animals and birds under your control. You are the head of gold. So he even had control of the animals and the birds. Verse 39, but after your kingdom comes to an end, another kingdom inferior to yours will rise up and take, rise to take your place. And then after that kingdom has fallen, yet a third kingdom represented by bronze will rise to rule the world. Following that kingdom, there will be a fourth one, as strong as iron. That kingdom will smash and crush all previous iron powers, just as iron smashes and crushes everything it strikes. The king, excuse me, verse 41, the feet and toes you saw were a combination of iron and baked clay, showing that this kingdom will be divided like iron mixed with clay. It will have some of the strength of iron, but will but while some parts of it will be as strong as iron, other parts will be as weak as clay. This mixture of iron and clay also shows that these kingdoms will try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances with each other through intermarriage. But they will not hold together just as iron and clay do not mix. During the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all the kingdoms into nothingness and it will stand forever. That is the meaning of the rock cut from the mountain, though not made by human hands, that crushed to pieces the statue of iron, bronze, clay, and gold. The great God was showing the king what will happen in the future. The dream is true and the meaning is certain. I love Daniel's humility. I love how God gave him this dream and he broke it down for him piece by piece, symbol by symbol. And Nebuchadnezzar, all he could do was to just be grateful because he knew this is exactly what God was showing him, future events he was showing him. And so I think this is so powerful, everyone, um, that we understand, again, that God is sovereign, that he rule, that he reigns. I've, I've read comments um, in different places where so many Christians are discouraged um, by those in power, especially those here in the U.S. They're, they're so discouraged by the laws that's being passed, and they're so discouraged about the things that they see in this world, and they feel like this nation is doomed. But if we look at these scriptures, God has it. He has let us know that he controls the course of world's events. He removes kings, and he set them up. And so our job is to begin to pray when we see things happening in this nation because we are a part of the kingdom of heaven we are part of the kingdom of god it is up to us to pray that god 
will swiftly bring justice and change, change things because we know that that's what God does. And so, yes, um, just like Nebuchadnezzar, if we when we further read and go into scripture, we see how he had the people trying to bow down and worship him. And so God was giving him a vision ahead of time, letting them know, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me let you know something. I made and created you, okay? I made and created you. So you ain't going to have other people bowing before you as if you're God. And so God will bring humility. That's why I say it. That's why the scriptures say he removes kings and he sets up kings. And so the scripture lets us know that a man's heart is wicked and deceitful in all its ways. So a lot of leaders we see um, um, in different countries, we, we, we look at them like that's evil. You evil the way you're doing this, 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 that, and the third. And God is saying, I'm in control. I got this. I need y'all praying. I need y'all praying. I need y'all bringing more people into the kingdom because I'm coming soon. So I need y'all praying. I need y'all preparing. Okay. I need y'all to do all that I've called you to do in this land. And so um, we see that Nebuchadnezzar got his answer from God, the true and living God, not the little small gods of this world, not Satan, but he actually got answers from the kingdom of God which was through Daniel and his friends. So verse 46 says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar threw himself down before Daniel and worshipped him, and he commanded his people to offer sacrifices and burn sweet incense before him. The, the king said to Daniel, Truly your God is the greatest of gods, the Lord of over kings, a ruler of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this secret. Do you hear that? Even Nebuchadnezzar was humbled in this moment. He said, your God is the greatest of gods and the Lord of kings and rulers of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal the secret. Verse 48 says, Then the king appointed Daniel to a high position and gave him many valuable gifts. He made Daniel ruler over the whole province of Babylon, as well as chief over all the wise men. At Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to go to be in charge of of all the affair of the province of Babylon while Daniel remained in the king's court. So we see how powerful God is and letting us know. And Jesus lets us know, and I put that in the, my other description box from the last video, that we are not of this world. We are in it, but we are not of this world. Um, we are a part of the kingdom of God. So when we see different disappointing things in this world, we look up to heaven, we worship God because we know that God is sovereign and that he needs us to pray and trust him to shift and move things in this land, okay? It is written, y'all. It is written. I saw something very interesting. I was reading Psalm chapter 2. I'm going to read it to you. Listen to what Psalm chapter 2 says. I think it's so powerful. God showing us who he really is in heaven and how he still rules um, even here through those who he has chosen, okay? And we know that Jesus is that big old rock he was talking about that will cover the entire earth because when his kingdom comes in this earth, mighty God. And you remember it came 2,000 years ago when he came on earth and they were like, oh, um, the Messiah is here. And yes, he was here. But then you had many who still did not believe that he was the Messiah, the true and living God. We know that he is the Messiah. And so we want to read further in Psalm chapter 2, listen to what it says. Why are the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepare for battle. The rulers plot together against the Lord and against this, his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they cry, and free ourselves from slavery to God. But the one who rules in heaven laughs. God laughs, y'all. The Lord scoffs at them. Then in anger, he rebukes them, terrifying them with his fierce fury. For the Lord declares, I have placed my chosen king on the throne in Jerusalem on my holy mountain. The king proclaims the Lord's decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Only ask and I will give you the nations as your inheritance, the whole earth as your possession. You will break them with an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. Y'all hear that? It sounds very familiar, right? Like something that we just read. 
Now then, you kings, act wisely. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with a reverent fear and rejoice with trembling. Submit to God's royal son or he will become angry and you will be destroyed in the midst of all your activities. But his anger flares up in an instant. But what joy for all who take refuge in him. Amen. What joy for all of those who take refuge in God. We have got to pray for these leaders, y'all. We have got to pray for, um, if you're in the U.S., you're praying for the president and, and, and different ones and lead and different ones and, and states and governors and senators. We're praying, y'all, that God would um, save them, number one, touch their hearts, and that they would rule accordingly, okay? We have to still remember that we are in this world and not of this world. We got other nations like Asia, Africa. Uh, we got uh, we got Israel. We got Russia. We got all of these different nations with prime ministers and presidents and different rulers um, that are ruling them. But in the end, y'all, we all submit to the one true and living God, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so I just thought it was so powerful. There's one other scripture that I would like to read. Um, and that is found in 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay, 1 Peter. I'm going to find it really quick. 1 Peter chapter 2. And it will be verse 11 through 17 that we read. Okay. So that's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 through 17. It says, Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. For the Lord's sake, respect all human authority, whether the king, whether the king as head of state or the officials he has appointed, for the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. It is God's will that you that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make few foolish foolish accusations against you for you are free yet you are god's slaves do so don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil respect everyone love your christian brothers and sisters fear god and respect the king so we see here that we still um are supposed to respect those in authority um, over the land, pray for those who are in authority. Um, like I said, I was reading some comments um, not too long ago of people that just feels like America's doomed and 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 this 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 country is doomed. And while that may be true, we got some God is gonna bring His justice, so some things is gonna happen in this land. Um, we should not be discouraged as sons of God. Okay, we should not be discouraged we are supposed to be encouraged because we know that there's an eternal kingdom and we are not of this world and so when god returns when when jesus christ returns and and um we are going to be a part of that we, right now we are a part of that kingdom but his his kingdom is going to be established just like nebuchadnezzar saw that huge rock that cup that was like a big mountain that covered the entire earth. We know, Lord, that that is the kingdom of of God at hand, you know. And so, um, we just want to be encouraged and not look at what's going on around us, but truly be encouraged. And we not we're not supposed to put all of our hope in men. We are supposed to put our hope in Jesus Christ. And so, I just encourage you. Uh, I just close this out with prayer, Father. I just thank you for your love your faithfulness, your tenderness, your, your your gentleness, your mercy, your grace. I thank you for waking us all up this morning, Lord God. And we all just 
we just we just give your name the praise lord god for you are good and your mercy endures forever we just pray that when we see things happening on this earth lord god as you show us and in, in dreams and in visions father that we'll know how to pray and we'll know how to warn others and how to prepare others and how to cover others in prayer lord god how to cover leaders in prayer nations in prayer because we know that you are returning soon lord jesus and we just right now cast all of our care upon you because you care in jesus name we pray amen god bless i'll come back with chapter three soon